Welcome back to Her Rules Radio. I'm Alexandra Jameson. You can call me Alex. I'm your hostess, your guide, your coach, especially if you're a driven, creative woman in tech or tech sales, or just a creative, out-of-the-box thinker. This is the final episode of summer 2021, but don't worry, I'll be back at the end of the year with a fresh, hot, baked season, but I'm going to be really busy this autumn. What I'm up to, well, that has a lot to do with today's show, so I'm going to give you a peek behind the curtain at Alex Jameson HQ. Starting this July, last month, I have had some of my original artwork, my paintings, featured in three art shows, including the upcoming Clio Art Fair, happening in New York City this September 9th through 12th. I'm so excited. I also just found out this week I've been named one of New York City's Artist Corps grant winners, which means I'll be receiving city funds to create an idea that I came up with earlier this year. It's a public art show of women and non-binary artists who are living and working in Brooklyn. I'm naming the show after some lyrics from a Patti Smith song. The show will be called Exchanging Visions. Now, this event and appearing in these art shows are a result of what I have called my 50 failures project. See, last year, I was really using the isolated time during COVID to paint a lot more. But just because I was painting didn't mean my art was getting seen, as most galleries were closed, and I'm still an emerging artist, meaning I don't have an agent yet, (laughs) and I haven't been in many shows, contests, or galleries. So I came up with a plan to help myself get brave and put myself out there. I decided I would try to get rejected from 50 art shows, galleries, residencies, contests, and art fairs in 2021. Now, why rejected instead of accepted 50 times? Well, applying to these art shows and events is, it's a whole new set of skills for me. Learning to write about my art, researching which kinds of events are a match for my work, and just the sheer volume of work needed to apply, it was pretty daunting. Plus, I'll be honest, getting rejected feels bad. But I had an earlier experience of many failures to inspire me. Dating. Yes, before I met my husband, Bob, I went on over 100 dates in 18 or so months. Now, most of them were first and only dates. Yes, I met most of them using a dating app. And while at times (laughs) it was exhausting or demoralizing, I was also learning who I wanted to be with and what I liked in a partner. And after a conversation with a friend, I decided I needed to look at dating as window shopping. And that if a date wasn't a match, or if someone wasn't a fit, or if I wasn't a fit for them, it wasn't a moral failing on my part. There wasn't anything inherently wrong with me or with him. We just needed to keep looking for someone who was a good fit. So I decided to take that attitude and set up a 50 failures challenge for myself this year. And I'll let you know how it's going in a minute. But how it works is, every Friday, I have an hour blocked on my calendar. It's set aside for me to apply to some art thing. A group gallery show, an online contest to submit my work to maybe win an award for week-long residencies all over the world somewhere or other art events. 
Now, in an hour, I can apply to one or two or maybe three things. Now, it was more time consuming at the beginning of the year because I had to learn how to write an artist bio, get good photography of my work, and comb through applications and programs that would be right for me. So here we are at the beginning of August 2021, and I've now applied to 34 magazines, art shows, residencies, and contests. Out of those 33, I've had my work accepted to a few art shows, one virtual gallery show, an art magazine, and I won the New York City Artist Corps grant. That means I still have 21 weeks left in the year to rack up another 26 failures. <laughs> And because I've gamified or made a game out of it, the rejections don't hurt. Okay, a few do hurt a little bit. I mean, there was this one art residency for two weeks in a cabin on the Oregon coast that I really, really wanted, but I'll try again next year. But I just keep showing up every week, applying to new opportunities. So it's just become this weekly ritual. So how can you, listener, gamify a goal of yours? Now, all of my coaching clients who are in sales are pretty good at showing up to the game of sales again and again. Even as a coach, I have to track and analyze my conversations with prospective clients so I can reach my own goals. Now, keep a few things in mind. A good failure project could (laughs) actually fail if you do any of these three things wrong. Number one is scope creep. That means that you get off track with your goals. If you have vague goals or you go outside the parameters of your original strategy, then you'll get off track and get distracted. For instance, I am only using my 50 failures project to apply to art shows, art residencies, online art competitions, and things of that sort. I'm not also including coaching sales conversations or any other pitches. It's just about submitting my artwork for events. So get specific. The number two thing that could lead to failure of your failure project is irregularity. As I said, I show up every Friday for one hour. It's automatically on my calendar every Friday afternoon to apply to something in the art world. So I do it almost every week, you know, some vacations excluded. The third thing is that if you don't keep track or look at your metrics, you will stop learning and you'll stop showing up. You won't know how you're doing. So what metrics are you using? I use a Google spreadsheet to track what I applied to, when the due date is, when the winners will be announced, along with a link to the website where I applied so I can go back to look if I won. That also means that next year I can go back and look at what I applied to to see if I want to apply to a residency again, reach out to a gallery and say, hey, I I applied last year. I'm going to try again this year to see if we can, you know, jog somebody's memory. So what can you make into a fun failure project? There are still 21 weeks in 2021. Could it be dating or sales or organizing a section of your house once a week or reaching out to one important contact or networking person every week? Okay, now I want to switch gears from 50 failures to three women, specifically three kinds of women who coach with me and the kind of people that I love to coach because they really rock it. The first kind of woman who comes to coach with me is my plan has gone to hell, Alex. (laughs) Right? She had a strategy. She had a set of goals and everything has fallen apart. Often this kind of woman has had both professional and personal life blow up at the same time, but she has been used to really rocking it, right? She's accomplished. 
She is good at getting things done. And for the first time in her life, everything is falling apart at once. The second kind of woman is Alex. The plan is happening. Everything's happening at once. Everything is full steam ahead. I need help sticking the landing. The third kind of woman is plan. Uh, I need a plan. (laughs) So number one is the plan has gone to hell. Number two is the plan is all happening at once. And number three is plan. I think I need a plan. So this happened over the last couple of weeks. I realized that these were the three types of women that I've been working with consistently. I've been speaking with a few rising creative leaders who've all been interested in coaching with me. And while they all seem to be coming from very different places and different industries, some well-known themes popped up and made it clear that they all fit with my history of coaching. So I'll just use their initials rather than their full names. The first woman, CR, she's a seasoned executive. And I mean, if you looked at her, you know, her life history, her bio, you'd be super impressed, but she's finding herself leaving her marriage, leaving her home state and looking for a totally new set of business opportunities. You know, the the startup world that she was in no longer works for her. And she's the one who said to me, Alex, the plan has gone to hell. The second woman, LL, is stepping into a CEO role for the first time. She is becoming CEO at a global education platform, and everything's going for her at once. Everything's happening at the same time. She said to me, my daughter's thriving. My marriage is solid. I'm about to lead a company I truly believe in. Everything's happening at once and I need to stick the landing in every direction. That's why she wanted to work with a coach like me. And the final woman, MG. Now, she's an established financial services saleswoman, and she finds herself coasting in her relationships and at her work. And she used to have really clear passion and plan, but she kind of feels adrift. She said, I just feel unclear and unmotivated. Things are fine, but that's not good enough for me. I don't know where I'm going. I don't really know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm wasting time. So these are the three most common types of leading women in tech and sales who seek out coaching with me. They know the value of having a trusted advisor at their side so they can save time, recalibrate, remember and reconnect with their strengths and make successful and sane progress in their lives and work. Now, over the years, I've been in a lot of visible leadership positions myself, including as a kind of well-being and personal development spokesperson because of our film Supersize Me and my books like Radical Alignment and Women, Food and Desire. And the pressure and scrutiny was intense, almost unbearable at times. Now, these days, I use my health coaching experience, artistic practices, and positive psychology training to help emerging women leaders, entrepreneurs, public figures, and philanthropists. If you think a conversation with me might possibly be helpful, you should reach out go to bit.ly forward slash coach Alex now, all one word. So bit.ly slash coach Alex now, or you can go to my website, alexandrajameson.com and click the little red button up at the top right. Now, people come to me for all sorts of reasons, including how to navigate challenges, make big decisions, surface their values, get unstuck, feel less isolated, find meaning, and improve their work and family relationships. Now, I also run some groups, which most likely will come back later in the fall of 2021. And they're particularly good for people who want to learn more about themselves and others, for people who want to be better leaders by increasing their emotional intelligence and ability to communicate clearly and listen fully. So if you're curious, don't be shy. We will just talk. 
I'm fun. I'm nice to talk to. I promise. Go choose a time at my link, bit.ly forward slash coach Alex now, or go to my website, alexandrajameson.com. Find the little red button at the top right, grab a spot. And thank you for listening to the show. Did it help? I'm so glad. Could it help a friend? You should share the show with them. And I would love for you to review and rate Her Rules Radio wherever you listen to your podcasts. I'll be back with season seven later this year. So keep an ear out. Be well. Stay creative. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening. Did you like today's episode? You should go leave a review. Hey, it really helps us out. I would so appreciate it. Do us a solid. Go leave a review wherever you love listening to your podcasts. It could be iTunes or Stitcher or Spotify or whatever. Anyway, if you're interested in some coaching with me one-on-one, go on over to bit.ly forward slash coach me, Alex, or go to alexandrajameson.com. And thanks. Thanks for listening. Totally appreciate you. Be sure to tune in next week for more goodness. See you soon. Mwah.